This week, I wanted to share with you some of the things that I have been learning recently with Charlie Snell. He has agreed to experiment with coaching me via Zoom, and it's been really fun, and I've learned a ton. A bunch of the things that we've been filming are going to be included in the upcoming virtual clinic, which goes uh, live today, meaning that you can um, purchase tickets today. It starts on September 18th. What I want to share with you today, um, there are at least two brand new ways of thinking that Charlie shared with me, and I wanted to share them with you. And I'm going to do my best to help it be as clear as possible, because um, it's it's not 100% clear in my mind yet, but it's getting there. So one of the first things is the idea that patterns aren't always the greatest way to go. I, I use a lot of patterns. Many of you do as well. Now, it does not mean that patterns are bad. They're really amazing, as you have experienced yourself. But when we become, oh... When we do too much with the same pattern, our horse can get so that when things change, they're really bothered. And I'm seeing a pattern. <laughs> I'm seeing that in my own, with all of my horses, I'm seeing that all of them have a little bit of trouble when I change things up. I am the common denominator. So in the little clip I'm gonna share with you, um, Charlie's coaching me with my thoroughbred Bobby and I discovered a couple weeks ago that he was Bobby was really really bothered by this cattle flag that I haven't used in years um, but had been given to me by a good friend of mine that helped me start him and had used it really wonderfully but I hadn't used it in a long time it makes this loud cracking noise and in preparation for the session with Charlie, I thought, well, I'm going to see how he does with this flag. So I pulled out the flag. I wasn't watching him at all. I, I didn't think he'd have trouble with it at all. And I picked it up and I made this loud cracking noise and he ran sideways across the arena with me on the other end of the line. And then I did, I did a couple of sessions with him with the flag before I had this session with Charlie. So this clip I'm going to show you is, um, is halfway into the lesson with Charlie and he had me do a pattern where I was approaching Bobby with the flag and rubbing him with it and then taking the flag off and bringing it back with some energy. And he'd been, he'd been improving and getting much better. And so I was sticking with the pattern. And Charlie switched the pattern on me and uh, wanted me to come in. Instead of coming in and petting him first, he wanted me to come in with some energy. And I didn't completely understand that. So he's saying, come in with some energy and you'll see what happens. I, I don't. And he kind of gets after me. It's kind of funny. And then the next time I make sure to come in with some energy and you can see what happens with Bobby with that change. So I will play the video. And now you can bring your flag out and go into some energy. Go. Now listen, go in with some energy. Thank <laughs> you, dear. So let me, let me just ask you real quick to clarify, like, I was, I was trying to follow the pattern of pet him uh, and then come in with energy. So um, it's, it's time to progress it and just go in with energy. Yeah. Um, why do we need to establish a pattern? Now, you may need to establish a little pattern for a reason, but... If we always have the pattern, then if, if we do something that's different than the pattern, he says, I can't handle it. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a big one. Okay. Yeah. Good. There. See there? That was, that was pretty good. Okay. Oops. 
Yeah, and there you go. There you go. With this horse in particular, what I'm seeing, you see, is when I do that, and I say, let's step off over here, and you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Case in point. Hey, that's your pony. One of the big takeaways for me in watching this again and thinking about it is the importance of exposing my horses to lots of different stimulus, but doing it in a way that isn't so predictable and then helping them find comfort, helping them let go of the trouble, as Charlie would say, um, and helping build the, I'm gonna say pattern, which again, it's not a negative, but helping to build the pattern of that sometimes things are going to come out of nowhere, but I can be okay with it. I can let go of that trouble and I can, and I can find comfort. So, uh, the next piece that I want to share with you, I'm again, this is the second, uh, day about a, four days later of Charlie coaching me with the flag. And we started doing some different things, um, to help Bobby, let go of the the trouble with the flag and both of these things i had never really done before one was um basically shaking the flag up above his head and him being able to get the flag to go away if he would put his head down so helping to teach him that the flag can signal him to relax so you'll see a little bit of that. And then the next part I just thought was the coolest thing ever. So one of the concepts that Charlie shared in this lesson, which if you join in on the clinic, I hope you do, you'll get to see the whole thing. Um, but one of the concepts he shared is the idea of oftentimes what we do with something scary is we'll walk away from the horse and have them follow it. Fabulous, right? They're herd animals. It, it brings out that, that herd instinct to follow and get curious about something. It's a great thing to do. But one of the things that he pointed out is that there's a shortcoming with that um, technique. And that is that the horse stays straight. And that we can, we can kind of cause them to follow it or make them follow it and not have it be their choice to follow it. So Charlie shares a, another way of using the flag where I'm gonna ask him to follow the flag in basically a, a circle. So he bends his body. And as many of you have learned, uh, straight lines will lengthen a horse or cause them to power up and go faster and circles will help to relax them. So I just, there's so many things I love about this uh, technique. So I'm going to share this video with you. I hope you find it interesting and uh, I hope you're going to join in on this virtual clinic. I'm so excited about it. It's a really special event um, and uh, I think you're going to learn a ton. So enjoy this next clip. Yeah, go ahead and let's see what he does. Almost, he's, he's almost gonna make that there, almost there. All right, he's making it. Okay, he to come out there with you, yeah. Kind of get him coming forward a little there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a little different for you, but there, he, now, all right, now he's making it. There you go, good, good. Now go pet him with it, just go pet him. And he said, you know, he said almost didn't come up, right. did it? No. See? Good. Yeah. See, he's probably still got some memories in there of maybe that flag driving him. Right. And, and you see, and, and that's that's not the point. That's... There you go. He says, I don't know about that. Now and don't move just, your feet. Okay. Don't, yeah, 
Don't move your feet. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, there you go. Good. All right. <laughs> now, just kind of drag that flag off of his ribs. Oh, kind of out towards me out here. Well, off towards the camera, kind of. Okay. And and see if he won't follow it. Okay. Get it. Kind of bring it to the ground a little bit more. There he's sinking. He's going to make it. There he goes. Keep going. There he goes. <laughs> yeah, good. All right. See his mind come around there? Yes. All right. Pretty cool stuff. So I hope you found some things for your own horsemanship. And again, I hope you join us in September, September 18th. Uh, tickets are on sale now and you can find out the information in the either the email that you got or in the blog post below. So have a wonderful week and I hope you have some wonderful discoveries with your horse.